three nuclear powers versus Ukraine. What is happening? This is what we will talk about today. The war in Ukraine has reached a pivotal moment with three nuclear armed nations, Russia, North Korea and others, shaping the battlefield in unexpected ways. How is Ukraine holding its ground against these overwhelming odds? Two days 101, 101st day of Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine. Russia said they could take Ukraine in three days. Western experts predicted two weeks. But I agree with Jake Bro, Ukraine, st Ukraine still stands strong and Russia will be defeated. In this video, we will explore several countries. Uh, I will say a few words about the United States. Just a couple words about elections. Uh, about strikes on Russian territory using US supplied weapons. And more. Uh, next country is Russia. Putin's updated nuclear doctrine, the involvement of North Korean troops in the Kursk region, and ongoing attacks on Ukrainian civilians. Ukraine. The state of Russian offensive of Kursk, conditions in bombed cities, and Ukraine's resilience in the face of escalating aggression. This is more than just a regional war. It is a fight for global stability and security. Watch now to understand the stakes and how you can help Ukraine to stop Putin's advances. Hello there, I'm Elina. Welcome back to my channel Enough of Propaganda. Please like, subscribe, share my videos. Let's make truth available for everyone. Since at least 10 days passed since my last video, uh, I want to say just two words about the United States election. Uh, I personally did my best. I provided all the information I collected on Donald Trump in over 20 years. And the result of it was in the several videos, like these, two, these, for example, or in my posts on Quora. So I provided Americans information to make their choice. The choice is made. Trump is elected. Despite what I said, despite the truth, despite that he is wanna be a dictator, despite that he is convicted criminal, and despite of many other things. I don't think this is good for Ukraine, but I will not speculate and will not talk much about United States politics unless something important is happening, because there is no point for the speculations. We will see what Trump will do soon enough. So far, we've seen several things. Number one, as I said in my video, one of my videos about Trump, can he stop the war in Ukraine in a day? I said he can't, and he didn't. So far, it's more than 24 hours past, way more than that and the war is still ongoing. And we will talk about it a little later. Number two, I'm not entirely sure, perhaps some American viewers will explain me uh, to me that um, I'm not entirely sure who is actually elected United States president. Since uh, a rich guy, Elon Musk, seems to be walking around and opening the doors in the White House by the foot and presence on important meetings even with the president of Ukraine, Zelensky, and not only present like a fly on the wall, just sitting, listening, not saying anything. No, he's actually taking part in the discussions and this and that. Is that normal for the United States, I wonder? Perhaps any private citizen could just walk in on some high security meetings and take part in it, like Farmer Joe from Minnesota or Professor Dan from Washington, D.C., I wonder if it's okay to foreign citizens present. I'd like to go and visit and listen what is happening. Uh, I don't see why not. As Canadian citizen, I was allowed to visit some American nuclear, uh, not nuclear, but American military bases. I just filled up a few forums, showed my Canadian passport. And I was just let in. In fact, we were let in without truck camper. And drove around American, American military base. So... Perhaps I can do that too, I would like to. So anyways, we will see everything soon enough, no point to speculate. Only lazy person so far didn't comment. Only lazy journalist so far didn't comment on uh, Ukraine now allowed to use long range weapons against Russia, according to New York Times, according to some other sources, and many of them are one. If they talking about Atakams, they are not long-range missiles. And I'll show you what Jake Broch has to say on that, and he is a military, former military and military expert. I'm not. But 
The fact that U.S. President Joe Biden has lifted restrictions on strike by American long-range weapons on Russian territory. And it's a good thing for Ukraine, even if it's just an Atakams and it's not a long-range missiles. Uh, the New York Times and Reuters reported on it and cited several sources, which, in my opinion, and correct me if I'm wrong, they should not blah 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 things like that. There is a war going on. The real actual people are dying in Ukraine every day. And Ukrainians and Russians, and right now they're dying in Russia as well. And uh, civilians, for example, even. Or military people. Nevertheless, this is a real war. This is not a joke. And this is why journalists should be very careful about what they reveal. And definitely verify information. Not just blabbing everything. Thank you for letting Putin know, so he can move certain things. Apparently he can't move some ammunition depots and stuff like that, but planes could be moved, for example, further. Uh, basically, three nuclear countries, Russia, North Korea, and even China helping with the weapons, with, for example, letting Russian oil to be pretend to be not Russian and so on, with providing Russian technology, providing Russian chips, providing Russian other things to keep Ukraine going. But the actually two nuclear powers are already fighting Ukraine. This is Russia and this is North Korea. This is what it sounds like was partly the reason why United States lifted their ban on using long-range American weapons or strike loan into Russian territory with American weapons and so on. And this is a major shift in United States policy. After that, Le Figaro reported on that, that France and Great Britain also allowed Ukraine to strike deep into Russian territory with its scalps and storm shadow missiles, but then they removed the information. And Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, when he commented on it, he said, the missiles will speak for themselves. And this is exactly how it was supposed to be. But no, the journalists had to blab. I haven't seen official statements from the government of the United States, for example, and so on. Or a president saying a lot of things. And I think this is how it's supposed to be. This is war going on. This is what Jake Bro has to say about Atakams. To begin, this headline is not correct. Long-range missiles are not being given to Ukraine. Atakams are short-range missiles. The definition of a long-range missile is an intercontinental ballistic missile having a range of greater than 5,500 kilometers or 3,400 miles. So Atakums are short-range missiles. Yes, they're longer than Gimlers. Gimlers up till this point with a range of 90 kilometers has been allowed on Russian territory. But let's not exaggerate what's being given to the Ukrainians here. The range of Atakams is about 300 kilometers, so a still short-range missile, but they could reach further. And Moscow would be on the way, and several other territories, like even Russian headquarters of the whole operation in Ukraine and Rostov, and so on. So it's a good thing for Ukraine, but let's not exaggerate. And according to current time and several other sources, Russia is already threatening to send missile RS-26 Rubesh Stoker 2, which is Israel long-range missile. It could be up to 6,000 kilometers according to Russia. Despite some rumors that Ukraine only can use the Atakams within Kursk region, which doesn't make any sense, uh, Moscow is now claiming that Ukraine successfully used Atakams already to strike weapons arsenal in Bryansk, which is Bryansk region. It's a town in Bryansk region which is not Kursk region, it's the next region over. And Russia claims that they have amended the nuclear doctrine. And so on. I'll talk about it a little later. All Russian puppets, who I called foreign agents of Putin, like from Hungary and Slovakia, for example, already condemned Biden's decision to allow Ukraine to use long-range weapons on territory of the Russian Federation. Boo-hoo! And... Elon Musk already chickening out and shaking in his boots about that and so on. So, watch your politicians. Whoever is stupid enough 
to say anything like that in this point in time. They are not for the defense of their country and their interests. They are not supporting Ukraine. They are supporting Russia. This war is one of the very few things which are actually black and white. And who isn't supporting the victim Ukraine? They are supporting aggressor by just standing by and doing nothing. It's kind of like you're walking on down the street and seeing a big guy full of weapons on him and a gun in the holster beating up a little girl. And you just walking by. You either help little girl or if you, if you are afraid of the big guy with the weapons, you can call the police. If you're doing absolutely nothing, you are helping the aggressor to beat up this little girl. Ukraine isn't a little girl and Ukraine defending itself already for 10 years. In three years of full-scale invasion and 1,001 day against Russia. And Ukraine will keep defending itself. Meanwhile, United States and several other countries like Italy, Spain, Greece shut down embassies in Ukraine, in Kiev, which is they're afraid of possible retaliation after firing not a long range, but so-called attackums, uh, probably attackums, we don't know for sure 100% so far. So they're already closing the embassies for now. Russia is afraid that Ukraine will have the ability to strike deep inside Russia. Putin was saber rattling for a while. He keeps threatening the world with nukes and threatening. I'll probably make another video on that and won't talk about it too much right now. But I will tell a couple words about so-called new nuclear doctrine. First of all, there is nothing new in it. Second of all, I might have already made a video or a post on Quora, which I have over 1.4 million views there on my Quora page. But um, the point is, I went to the sources. I looked Russian old doctrine and there is nothing new in that proposed to be new doctrine. And if now they even updated it more, so far everything I heard doesn't say there is anything new. The key points are, Putin is the czar and he has the right to do whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah, if there is an existential threat to Russia, Russia can use nukes. That was an old doctrine and only up to Putin to decide what this existential threat is. For example, they say LGBT is an existential threat to Russia. Well, let's use nukes and so on. So, in the so-called new doctrine, they only clarified something. It's like, if you attack me and strike me, I can attack you with nuclear weapons. Now I clarify, if you attack me by whacking me with the fist, if you're attacking me by whacking me with baseball bat, if you're attacking me and whacking me with the stick, with a stone, with this, with that, I can use nuclear weapons. This is basically the difference between old doctrine and the new. This is why United States didn't bother in uh, updated their doctrine. And they shouldn't. There is nothing new. It's another lie and another threat from Putin. Nothing more. According to Siberia realities, not even ruins ashes, residents of Kursk region demands to stop the war in Ukraine. So Russian people started to realize that the war came to their places. The Olgovka Kursk region uh, their people recorded a video message to Putin asking him to stop them the war and so on. Russia keep destroying Russian territory, wiping out several cities, uh, like towns completely. So the only place where Russia could get some advantage, it was that place which they just completely wiped out, obliterated with Russian bombs. That's all. So far, Russian activities in Kursk and Russian offensive is failing. And this is what citizens has to say. They're not happy. This is how it was. This is what they have now. Well, they didn't protest against the war in Ukraine in the past. What did they expect will happen? The war came to their territory and now they're complaining. This is Gordievka village, Korenevsky district, Kursk region. Ukraine have it for three years already, almost. And for over 10 years, the war in Ukraine was still going on. Now the war came to Russia. Meanwhile, Russian economy is going down. As I explained in, my, in this my video, this is what will happen. And it is happening right now. I'll probably talk about it in a separate video. But in general, stagflation is the worst 
thing which can happen to an economy. But now Russians are thinking that stagflation isn't even the worst thing which can happen to Russian economy. It can go even worse. And Russian Central Bank uh, chief Elvira Nabiulina and the special uh, like a think tank or research institute. Uh, and the chief of that institute is, by the way, the brother or relative of uh, Russian Minister of Defense, Belousov. They also published information saying that Russian economy is garbage and it's gonna be awful. So, stay tuned for that. I will not talk much about the situation on the front. That's a different videos for that and Jake Bro talked about it quite a bit. There are many other channels who are talking about the war in Ukraine. But look at this number. It's on February 24th, from February 24th, 2022 to November 19th, 724,000 eliminated personnel, losses, dead, wounded, captured, missing in action. In one day, 1,610. I don't see in the last days completely anything less than 1,400 or 600 troops dead. And another thing is, I saw 10,000 in a week, 10,450 in a week was a huge number. It's a highest weekly number, but no, this record is already beaten. 11,370 Russian personal losses during last week. And I'm afraid before Trump will get into power, Putin will throw even more people into meat grinder, trying to move Ukrainians out of Kursk region and captured more territory in Ukraine. This is why North Korean troops arrived to help Putin. These are not North Korean troops, but what I can say about them, they are in Russia, they fighting in the Kursk region, they already dying in the Kursk region, and they already raping Russian women in the Kursk region. There is just now I seen the post about the teacher showed up to be a communicator between North Korean troops and Russians, and what North Koreans did, they raped her. And this is even more horrifying crime. This is a breach of Geneva Conventions, which specifically bans such action. It's a... Russia is reportedly conscripting men from the Russian occupied areas in eastern and southern Ukraine. Exactly as they did in Donbass, and they already killed all the young, or any men, basically, who can hold the weapons in Donbass, occupied regions of by Russia. And now they continue doing exactly the same thing, in the captured Ukrainian territories. This is to the point of, if Ukraine will give up to Russia, this is what will happen. This has already happened in Donbass regions. Now it is happening, right now. They basically violating Geneva Conventions and they grabbing people into the army as early as they are 18 years old, some Ukrainian young men. And the idea that the war will stop and Putin will stop killing Ukrainian people just because magically they will have some sort of an agreement. This is all what is already happening right now. You can read for yourself. It's about what is happening on the front. The summary of several things. And Vladimir Zelensky visited Pokrovsk and Kupiansk in one day. Both cities located less than 10 kilometers from the front line. Meanwhile, Vladimir Putin disappeared for two weeks, which is he's doing quite often. He just magically disappears in Russia using so-called preserves, it's like a tin can of meat, basically pre-recorded videos from some meetings, just to produce an effect. Watch and learn, by the way, Donald Trump, how to do it. When you want to go to play golf and Americans didn't, uh, so Americans will not whine about, Trump doesn't work, Trump is playing golf, Trump is 200, sending 200 tweets a day. You make pre-recorded video just like Putin, then you're going to play golf, and for two weeks, American people watching you working non-stop day and night. But Zelensky actually is in the front. And so on. Russian defense ministry claiming that Ukrainian troops are trapped in a cauldron in near Olgivka. Uh, but Russian defense ministry lies all the time. I don't even bother to uh, comment on that. Russian resources reports on arrest of command staff for the Russian army forces units operating in Seversky, salient. By the way, about this I can say that, yes, that's true, and they're reporting on real events, and how it happened. 
Russian commanders were lying that some places were captured. And then all of a sudden, the commission of high officers showed up and they wanted to visit the places which Russian army supposed to be captured. It turned out to be it wasn't captured at all. There are Ukrainian troops there. There is Ukrainian army there. And they couldn't visit it for obvious reasons. Oh, they got mad and started to arrest Russian lying officers who were reporting, we captured this, we captured that. This is how it happened. And sadly, on the night of November 17th, one of the largest combined air raids on Ukraine took place. Lots of missiles, 42 Shahed type drones, as well of other unidentified vehicles out of 90 launched. 200 air targets and so on. Kinjals, Tsarkons, anything. Try to hit Ukraine and hitting civilians. Fire, the Russian missile attack. At least eight people killed, many wounded right here. It is absolutely residential civilian area. You can just imagine what the horror is happening right there. This is Alexei Goncherenko, Ukrainian politician. And this is what happened in Odessa, happened in Odessa. Now, I think about 11 people confirmed killed, some of them died later. So while Ukraine is actually defending itself and basically destroying Russian uh, equipment, up to 90 pieces of equipment was destroyed in Kursk region, just in about a few days, a week or so. It's huge. Ah, you, ah, Russia is bombing civilians. This is civilian areas in Odessa, and this is Ukrainian politician Alexei Goncharenko. And they're using cluster munitions, there are wounded, many victims. And I really remember what kind of wine was when United States and some other countries allowed Ukrainians to use cluster munitions actually on the battlefield, what it was meant for, in the trenches and so on. And yet, Russia used cluster munitions in 2014 and 15, hitting Ukraine. From the day one, they used it in Kharkov in 2022. Right now, the using is in Odessa. And where is the whining? Where is the screams of so-called defenders of the human rights or anything? How dare you? How could you? How could you, Russia, doing it? No, but there, there are other whining. There we go. According to Jurgen Nodet, this is unbelievable. UN calls for protection of Russian civilians following the reports of Biden's authorization to launch attack arms missiles against Russia. Representative of Security General of Secretary of the Secretary General Stefan Jurek, or if I pronounce his name right. Remember this face. And remember Guterres who went bent the knee and went to Russia. And by the way, Putin didn't congratulate Donald Trump officially. Putin didn't call Trump. Putin mentioned something on the forum. Yeah, yeah, congratulations, something like that. I wonder who called him first. Trump called Putin or Putin called Trump? Because if Trump called Putin first, according to the how it officially should be done, it's kind of mean that he bent the knee to Putin. And recently Scholz bent the knee to Putin and called Putin and talked to him for an hour. And the results of it you just saw. The, right after Scholz talked to Putin, Putin whacked Ukraine with a whole bunch of missiles. There was a huge, basically, record attack, and part of it I just showed you in Odessa, what happened. So Putin is hiding. Meanwhile, Pes meanwhile Peskov said uh, that Russia is not going to stop. They, not want, they don't want ceasefire. They want the capitulation of Ukraine, basically. And Russian army now will use reindeer skins, by the way. For camouflage. That is not a joke. Sergei Nosov, governor of Magadan region, posted on Telegram channel. We will definitely support the initiative of our reindeer herders from Severo Ivensky district and all Russian people front activists to use reindeer skin for camouflage on the front line front lines. Good luck to you. Meanwhile, you Ukrainians keep fighting for its freedom. And this is how one of the missiles was shot down by Ukrainian anti-aircraft gunner. Natalia Grabarchuk, who worked as the kindergarten teacher before the war. She managed to hit air target with this device. Uh, basically, igla, man pads, man pads. You're welcome to watch it yourself. What can we do?
as a private citizen. For example, this is what Jake Bro is doing. He start is starting a new Christmas convoy. He already had two successful fundraisers, which I personally took part in. And both times we collected over $1 million. This time the goal is $1 million. And in one day, over $228,000 raised. So thank you to Jake Bro. Thank you to everyone who, su who are supporting Ukraine. Uh, many people donating in Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainians doing it in Russian, uh, like Michael Naki, for example, doing this too, helping Ukraine and donating. There are probably people who collected more money, but in English speaking space, I think Jake Bros is the most, the biggest basically fundraisers. So let's do it again. Let's keep supporting Ukraine. Please stand by Ukraine. I stand by Ukraine. I will never give up. And my country, Canada, is standing by Ukraine. So is Jake Bro and every decent person on this planet from any country. Learn the truth and stay informed. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. See you later.